Investing activities. Para 15. The separate disclosure of cash flows arising from investing activities is important because the cash flows represent the extent to which expenditures have been made for resources intended to generate future income and cash flows. Examples of cash flows arising from investing activities are a. Cash payments to acquire fixed assets, including intangibles. These payments include those relating to capitalized research and development costs and self-constructed fixed assets. b. Cash receipts from disposal of fixed assets, including intangibles. c. Cash payments to acquire shares, warrants, or debt instruments of other enterprises and interests in joint ventures other than payments for those instruments considered to be cash equivalents and those held for dealing or trading purposes. d. Cash receipts from disposal of shares, warrants, or debt instruments of other enterprises and interests in joint ventures other than receipts from those instruments considered to be cash equivalents and those held for dealing or trading purposes. E. Cash advances and loans made to third parties other than advances and loans made by a financial enterprise. F. Cash receipts from the repayment of advances and loans made to third parties other than advances and loans of a financial enterprise. G. Cash payments for futures contracts, forward contracts, option contracts and swap contracts except when the contracts are held for dealing or trading purposes or the payments are classified as financing activities and H. Cash receipts from futures contracts, forward contracts, option contracts and swap contracts except when the contracts are held for dealing or trading purposes or the receipts are classified as financing activities. Investing activities. Para 16. When a contract is accounted for as a hedge of an identifiable position, the cash flows of the contract are classified in the same manner as the cash flows of the position being hedged. Financing activities. Para 17. The separate disclosure of cash flows arising from financing activities is important because it is useful in predicting claims on future cash flows by providers of funds, both capital and borrowings, to the enterprise. Examples of cash flows arising from financing activities are a. Cash proceeds from issuing shares or other similar instruments b. Cash proceeds from issuing debentures, loans, notes, bonds, and other short or long-term borrowings, and c. Cash repayments of amounts borrowed. Reporting cash flows from operating activities. 18. An enterprise should report cash flows from operating activities using either a. The direct method whereby major classes of gross cash receipts and gross cash payments are disclosed, or b. The indirect method whereby net profit or loss is adjusted for the effects of transactions of a non-cash nature. Any deferrals or accruals of past or future operating cash receipts or payments in items of income or expense associated with investing or financing cash flows. Power 19. The direct method provides information which may be useful in estimating future cash flows and which is not available under the indirect method and is, therefore, considered more appropriate than the indirect method. Under the direct method, information about major classes of gross cash receipts and gross cash payments may be obtained either a. From the accounting records of the enterprise, or b. By adjusting sales, cost of sales, interest and similar income and interest expense and similar charges for a financial enterprise and other items in the statement of profit and loss for 1. Changes during the period in inventories and operating receivables and payables 2. Other non-cash items and 3. Other items for which the cash effects are investing or financing cash flows. Power 20. 
Under the indirect method, the net cash flow from operating activities is determined by adjusting net profit or loss for the effects of a. Changes during the period in inventories and operating receivables and payables. b. Non-cash items such as depreciation, provisions, deferred taxes and unrealized foreign exchange gains and losses, and c. All other items for which the cash effects are investing or financing cash flows. Alternatively, the net cash flow from operating activities may be presented under the indirect method by showing the operating revenues and expenses excluding non-cash items disclosed in the statement of profit and loss and the changes during the period in inventories and operating receivables and payables. Reporting cash flows from investing and financing activities. Para 21. An enterprise should report separately major classes of gross cash receipts and gross cash payments arising from investing and financing activities except to the extent that cash flows described in paragraphs 22 and 24 are reported on a net basis. Para 22. Cash flows arising from the following operating, investing, or financing activities may be reported on a net basis. A. Cash receipts and payments on behalf of customers when the cash flows reflect the activities of the customer rather than those of the enterprise, and B. Cash receipts and payments for items in which the turnover is quick, the amounts are large, and the maturities are short. Para 23. Examples of cash receipts and payments referred to in paragraph 22A are A. The acceptance and repayment of demand deposits by a bank B. Funds held for customers by an investment enterprise and C. Rents collected on behalf of and paid over to the owners of properties Examples of cash receipts and payments referred to in paragraph 22b are advances made for and the repayments of a. Principal amounts relating to credit card customers b. The purchase and sale of investments and c. Other short-term borrowings, for example, those which have a maturity period of three months or less. Reporting cash flows on a net basis Para 24. Cash flows arising from each of the following activities of a financial enterprise may be reported on a net basis. A. Cash receipts and payments for the acceptance and repayment of deposits with a fixed maturity date. B. The placement of deposits with and withdrawal of deposits from other financial enterprises. And C. Cash advances and loans made to customers and the repayment of those advances and loans. Foreign currency cash flows. Para 25. Cash flows arising from transactions in a foreign currency should be recorded in an enterprise's reporting currency by applying to the foreign currency amount the exchange rate between the reporting currency and the foreign currency at the date of the cash flow. A rate that approximates the actual rate may be used if the result is substantially the same as would arise if the rates at the dates of the cash flows were used. The effect of changes in exchange rates on cash and cash equivalents held in a foreign currency should be reported as a separate part of the reconciliation of the changes in cash and cash equivalents during the period. Para 26. Cash flows denominated in foreign currency are reported in a manner consistent with accounting standard as 11 accounting for the effects of changes in foreign exchange rates. This permits the use of an exchange rate that approximates the actual rate. For example, a weighted average exchange rate for a period may be used for recording foreign currency transactions. Para 27. Unrealized gains and losses arising from changes in foreign exchange rates are not cash flows. However, the effect of exchange rate changes on cash and cash equivalents held or due in a foreign currency is reported in the cash flow statement in order to reconcile cash and cash equivalents at the beginning and the end of the period.
This amount is presented separately from cash flows from operating, investing, and financing activities and includes the difference.